Good evening, everyone. If you saw my latest video, then you know I gave a variation of my most hated problem that I had as an undergraduate. It's problem 2.26 from Griffiths Electrodynamics, which involves a cone. And I gave a variation of that cone problem to a set of different large language models, reasoning large language models yesterday, and they took it down without too much difficulty. Now, one noticeable omission from that list of reasoning models was Grok 3. Now, to be honest, I just completely forgot about Grok. I haven't used it in a while, but I thought, what the heck, might as well do it for completion. I thought I would give Grok 3 this problem, and I used the thinking mode, so this is Grok 3 with thinking. And as I scroll down from the chain of thought, I'm going to give you the spoiler right now, it did indeed get this problem, but it went about it in a way that was slightly different than the other large language models that I thought I would at least comment on the minor difference that I saw here. So indeed, it does get the same expression. We have this log of 1 plus root 2 has the right coefficient out in the front, depending on how if you want to distribute the two or not. One of the interesting things about this way that Grok had solved the problem was it got to an integral that I didn't really recognize or know that you could get to in this problem, which is where you get to this integral and you get to the arc cinch function. And I had no idea that apparently arc cinch of one is equal to log one plus root two. I also checked Mathematica to verify this myself because I just had no idea that these two were equivalent expressions but indeed they are. And so Grok3 was able to get the answer just like the other reasoning large language models. And before I close this video, I'm not too surprised that Grok3 was able to get this, but I think what I'm starting to acknowledge as I've been doing these tests for the past few months is that these large language models, these especially these reasoning large language models that use test time compute and chain of thought are able to solve problems that would take humans several minutes to over an hour, depending on you know how fast or slow it takes you to, to carry out all these kinds of calculations. So what I'm trying to say is that I think I'm going to need to spend some time to come up with new benchmarks, new questions, new approaches to testing its understanding of physics at the college and graduate student level. Because to me, it's quite possible that these models have mastered symbol manipulation and pattern recognition in fields like physics and mathematics without truly understanding how the world really works. You know, there's an old saying from, I forgot who it was, but there's, there's someone who said that the map is not the territory, right? And what that's trying to say is that the map is a model of the terrain, right? It's, it's your best representation of what the underlying features of the true nature of reality is. The LLMs, the reasoning LLMs, may have very well have mastered the map, but do they really understand the territory that they walk in? That's the question that I'd like to try and address in future videos. That's not to say that I won't try and give it these standard textbook problems anymore because honestly, I still do find it fun when I see it solve a problem like this and it's a great way to check your work. So I think that's a, they're a very handy tool for that. But if we want to reach a deeper understanding of what these things really understand, if they understand anything really of our real world, then I think we'll need to come up with different benchmarks. So that's that for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching and uh, stay tuned for other videos like this that involve uh, different kinds of tests of these LLMs, and I will see you next time.